wouldn't be any phytoplankton because there's no sunlight, but there should be zooplankton. And the lasers are 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters apart. Does anyone have an estimate of when you start seeing marine snow, what depth? Uh, I think you can see marine snow at all depths. I mean, it, it, uh, oh, you mean where, like how, sh when you don't see it shallow? Well, the viewers are saying, what depth do you start seeing it at? Um, well, if you mean how deep, you know, you can see it down here. The, the sediment that we see is made up essentially of marine snow, but there is less down deep because a lot of it gets consumed uh, by organisms shallower, but some of it makes makes it through. It's kind of a carbon uh, sequestration, you know. It's the carbon in those organisms is making it down, getting stored in these sediments. Can you explain what marine snow is? Uh, it's it's just the it's kind of a catch-all for dead animals, fecal matter. Um, suppose, largely biologically derived yeah I mean it, some of it can be mineral you know if ash lands on the ocean and then kind of agglomerates with other biological stuff but uh, yeah so I called in another move that should get us about 20 more meters up slope perfect will, yeah, roger that thank you Randy it'll be about 2320 okay uh, so not too it's kind of on the nose. We could go higher up, but so we'll see where that yeah, lands we'll us. Yeah, we'll see what we'll the rocks look like. Take there. a look like, yeah. How y'all doing in the front row? Good. I feel like I haven't talked to you in a while. <laughs> Unacceptable. How are you, Adam? Okay. Oh. Just taking some deep breaths back here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any insights to uh, impart? Uh... From your meditative state? Nope. I, nope. Not unprompted. I'm sure something will come up, though. Okay. So yeah. Continue chatting. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in trouble? No, you're not.
right, it's time for a favorite viewer question. What's the craziest thing you've seen on this expedition? Ooh, let's see. I think it was the juggling um, emoji <laughs> coming out of the wormhole last night. I think that was. Oh yeah, definitely the. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Huge worms. science. Yeah, let's see. I mean, that snail, that that crazy tumbling snail, yeah, <laughs> still gets me. Oh, I I know. It was <laughs> that starfish on that whip coral. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's just uncomfortable to bring up. Also, the acorn worm. That the acorn worm. Yeah, yeah. Super yeah. weird. But I don't know. I think the spoon worm might top. And the spoon worm. Ooh. Spoon <laughs> worm. Yeah. <laughs> the sample of that crinoid was very fun. We saw, actually, I don't know if you guys remember this, there was a sponge on a nodule. We stared at it for quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. the hot sponge. Huh. The hot. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it may very well be whatever that white thing is that could take the cake. I mean, right now it doesn't yeah. seem that extreme, yeah. but when we find out that it is yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, curious to know if it was some old, something old trash, something that was dropped from above, or if it was... Several of them, same yeah. thing. How about most exciting thing you've seen? Definitely that sea cucumber eating sand. Oh that my was, no, I was that thinking about so that cute. all night. Chicken sea monster. <laughs> I think that was the cutest thing that, that was we've seen. Cute. Yeah. I kept on thinking, wow, that that's pounding sand, right? That, isn't that usually like a, like, you can go pound sand. That sea cucumber is like, yes, I will. Thank you. I'm so happy. I mean, it's living in paradise. Like, unlimited sandbar. You can go pound sand. Did All you, you just eat. leave the malt shop? What is the... You go pound sand. The malt All you can eat sediment. The day in the life of a sea cucumber. But the Dumbo octopus was... Mm. Oh, yeah, that Grandpa. A, that was a dream sighting. Grandpa, my favorite. <laughs> Grandpa Toothus. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> we got an hour left. Don't tell me you're going to do it the whole time. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a 20 minutes left talk. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the viewers think it's all extremely fascinating, so good job, team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fascinating how people of your caliber could be in the positions that you're in. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they keep asking about how you get in a position like that. Yeah, it's, it's actually, you can't. How did you get You can't question? read the, the tone of incredulity. <laughs> yeah. 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 How did, did you get in? <laughs> and, and by extrapolation, if these people are running the show, <laughs> maybe I could, too, right. <laughs> and do a better job. <laughs> I'll just keep saying colophagus until we get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I love the pinkish glow they have. They're so pretty. Want to zoom in on there, Dave? It looks like a bath sponge, you know, that back scrubber is there. Yeah. On the same stock. All right. What? Do we have an estimate of how long is left on the dive yet? Uh, no, I think we're about halfway. But uh, hopefully we're, I don't know. We'll have to get to the summit, that's all I'll say. 
<laughs> or more than halfway, right? Yeah, it looks like Two a bit thirds. more than halfway. It might be a bit slower going in the steeper bits, but um, yeah, definitely a little more than halfway. Can you get a quick zoom on this little... Yeah, mushroom, he is. Mushroom, mushroom coral. coral. Anthemastis. I really like these. We haven't seen many closed up, which is kind of what gives it its name. They look like little Super Mario Brothers mushrooms. Oh, <laughs> I love Super Mario. All right. Come on. <laughs> it's underwater music. That was a recommendation, right, for soundtrack? Yeah, the underwater music, Mario. Oh. Huh. What would be the, you know when you punch a coin, what would be that when It's like when we get a sample and we punch yeah. a coin? Cha-ching! <laughs> <laughs> Deposit the rocks. Themed soundboards. Oh my god, if you guys gave me a soundboard... <laughs> oh, yeah. well we've already given you like <laughs> the ability to draw on the... <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was your first mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would just be the horn. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> pew, pew. Like after everything that you say. <laughs> right. Put them in like front of a live studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> One of our viewers is asking if we're taking sediment samples for benthic studies. Uh, we've only collected a couple sediment samples. The sediment here is not super thick, so it's tough to get a good core, but we've collected a couple. Uh, we can look for infauna, the organisms that live in the sediment. Uh, we can put those in a, the samples in a sample archive that, that uh, other researchers can get access to. Uh, I think the, fir the most successful cores we have, we have a pair of them, so use them for different different uh, studies but a lot of the times we tried to get uh, push core if you're watching about a I don't know 45 minutes ago and sediment was only a couple centimeters thick and topped with these heavy nodules so we just really couldn't, uh, couldn't get it all the way back to the storage quiver Here's a video and ROV question. When Dave zooms in, who does the pans and tilts? Is it the ROV or Dave? And they say, great job on the video. That is the ROV. It's a combination of the uh, ROV flying uh, to get in close to uh, uh, whatever the object is. Uh, me uh, opening and closing the iris for proper exposure, zooming, focusing, and then the ROV uh, pilot uh, can pan and tilt the camera. So it's a, kind of a coordinated dance of uh, keeping the object uh, in the middle of the screen, in focus, zooming into the uh, desired uh, tightness and what we want to see, that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, and then the ROV uh, can either be sitting flat on the, uh, on the sea floor uh, and relatively stable, or uh, oftentimes we're just flying by uh, and so, uh, like when that sponge that we just looked at a few minutes ago, Jake did a little fly around by it. So, and I'm constantly tweaking the focus. I have three different things to do and only two hands. <laughs> and sometimes that gets uh, a, little, uh, a little complex. We got about 30 meters before we can settle enough to grab any, or less uh, than that. So I just uh, the ship has come to a stop. I oh. think Argus has about 30 meters l laterally to travel, 30 or 40 okay. meters. We might get another 10 vertical out of it. Um, so vertical, I think, is um, good enough. OK, so we'll just, uh, we'll, Argus will be settling soon. And OK. We can kind of look around. But if it's just a rock and you see one you really like and want to grab it, then we, it's pretty quick. So. Well, we got to do Niskin, too. So right. yeah. we'll wait for settle. All right. Should is that one? <laughs> okay. I got a feeling you were this, is, this is just what we were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> <laughs>
One of our viewers also ask about um, whether bones have ever been found. Were any of you on the whale fall last season? I think all of us have been on the whale fall. This, yeah, the second time, time I was on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there an estimate of how long the bones will? I think uh, that we've been visiting it now, and we came back two years later, I think it was. So we've discovered it, and it was really covered with um, a lot of organisms, including octopus and what have you and then the second time it was significantly more eaten away and kind of deteriorated so i think that they're getting a sense of you know how long that takes there's other there are studies that i mean obviously it's depth dependent and regional but what organisms you know they'll they'll study a whale fall um I think they there's been studies of even like dragging a, a whale that has beached itself, so a fresh, oh, yeah, yeah, intentional whale. like off. Huh. Uh, Bari did that. Yeah, drop it down to the sea floor and with you know study it with either long term cameras or constant visiting and see what That's cool. what comes when. You can see video clips in. Photo, photo albums, I believe, also of the whale fall. It's a whole topic on our website in the gallery. There's a cool 3D reconstruction of it. That's right, yeah. yeah. Photogrammetry. I yeah. think that's it's probably linked somewhere on our website, but also um, the National Marine Sanctuary likely has that somewhere. I think it's a story map. Yeah. Nice. So probably if you were to Google uh, Monterey... A National Marine Sanctuary whale fall story map. You'd get that. All one word? Yep. Okay. Kind <laughs> 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 of like a sad one, that one. Burr, burr. We were talking about a slide whistle the other day. <laughs> And if I had one, it would be over for all of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't understand the timing. We could come in with the slide whistle. <laughs> all right. Argus is probably slowing down, so you're within the... Okay. Yeah. So start and to look for rocks. Looking, back, yeah, we're looking for rocks. Row. Okay. Right. Well, it's probably going to be over here somewhere. More sedimenty over to the right. And this is going to go into the small bins on the side there? I think we have some room in the big ones. Um, that's kind of what I'm aiming for. Big bin. All right, I'm going to give you a few marks here. I like that one. You like that, that one? one? Okay. Okay. You pointed at the nodules? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 bigger no. one. Yeah. That looks like a good sized one. Yeah, those look good. Yeah, there's plenty to work with right here in front of us. Right to that. All right. All 
I'll oh, turn yeah. your cameras and stuff, no worries. Okay. You full rack back there? Yep, full rack back. Right. We're going to go for F, outboard F there. Yeah, sure. Gotcha. This one right here? Was it? I like that one. Yeah. All right, if you grab that. Is it cemented in there? I don't know. Let's see. I don't really have a good grip on it. If you want, you can always oh. close your fingers and pry down on it. Yeah. I'll try that. Yeah. Might give you more leverage. Oh. Yeah, that one might be cemented in there. How about that one to the left? Oh, it moved a little bit. Oh yeah, you're good. You'll get it. Think so? Alright. Think so. Are your lucky socks? Yeah. Yeah, what socks are you wearing, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, it'll come loose. Give it a wiggle. Oh. You know it. Go ahead and try the pry bar action again there, Jake. Right. Maybe reset yourself up. Yeah. Just spin myself a little bit. Randy, can you stick lock me? Oh wait, one second, sorry. Right there. See if that holds. There you go, it's starting to give. Oh. Try that prior action to that to the rightmost lead. Yeah. Nice. Nice. There I you. don't wanna go. Maybe it's really bottom heavy, hey? Yeah. Try again. It's almost there. Yeah. That's a big boy. It is. Yeah. That's a bad boy. Big boy. Is that too big? That may not fit. I don't think that'll fit. Okay. About the one to the to right in front of Mongo there. Right That's here? Like is that one okay? So it's Adam? Thanks. What do you think? Sarah? Adam's coming on. Yeah. That one's fine. Okay. Thanks. Yep. You can push on in there a little bit there, Dave. That should be good. Thank you. Nice. That'll go. Nice. I'm going to pan right a little bit so you can... Great. All right. Perfect. 
this 120? This is going to be 120. And How wide there, Dave? 121 for the Niskan. Switching salvos, still got you in bubble. And go ahead and shoot for F there, Jake. All right. We wrist over a little bit and arm down. Works. <laughs> <laughs> good job. That looks good. Definitely worked. <laughs> All right, for Niskins, one and two are open. Edge. Just going to make sure it's well retracted, yeah. One and two, so the red one's on the top there. You going to open the iris a little bit? Yeah, you're already on it there, Dave. One and two. Not my first time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Oh. Nice. Nice. Uh, oh, gotta, oh, stand by. Stand by. Yeah. All right, you got it. There go it ahead, popped. Oh. That was two. Number two. Nope. Thank yep. you. Number two. All right, I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. See our final choice. And rotate the jaws so when it opens, and it path. Go into the arm. I would say Rocco? let's go straight to 10. Like that? Yep. Okay. So we might be doing some lateraling around, along uh, contour. Just be aware nice. of that, pilots. Roger that. But we will be going generally upslope, just cross cutting it a bit. Roger. All right. Zero three zero. Zero three zero, Raj. Bridge nav. Can we step one hundred meters bearing zero three zero? Thank you. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I was making sure that bin was closed, but also free advertising. Yeah. <laughs> A viewer is asking, how do you mark the coordinates of the samples you take? So <clears throat> we have GPS positioning on the ship, and then we have acoustic positioning subsea. Um, so it's kind of a call and response is the long and the short of it. And uh, we can get a sense of where the vehicles are in relation to the ship and then pair that with the ship's uh, GPS. And uh, we can have... A then give uh, latitude and longitude coordinates Sorry. of the samples and also everywhere the vehicles are. We're tracking them along the bottom as we go.
All right. Come on. All right. One of our viewers is asking if there has been interest in working with an astrogeologist looking for possible meteorite fragments. And wasn't it last, last fall some of that was going on? Some of that was going on, yeah. 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 Couple, we did, we've we done that twice now with um, Mark Fries, who's NASA's Cosmic Dust Curator, which is the coolest job <laughs> title of all time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, there was uh, reports and uh, reports of a meteorite offshore of Oregon, I believe it is, or Washington. Mm -hmm. And they were able to actually, based on eyewitness, um, to get a general location, they actually tracked the, the meteorite uh, using weather Doppler through the atmosphere and to the sea surface. So we had a general idea of where it is. Um, and then we've, we've gone on kind of a, a hunt And did you find pieces? Uh, very small fragments, very micro pieces, but it's hard to say if those then were from that individual because individual meteorite or just general bombardment of the Earth. I don't know if he's conclusively reached that. Um, did you use like a magnet to collect We them? did, yeah. We oh, used awesome. a, a magnet array at a few different means. We slurped up a lot of sediment. Too. Slurped up yeah. sediment. Uh, we had, the first try, we had kind of a magnet array and we all had labeled our own magnets, everyone on board. So if, if it had stuck to your magnet, you'd get recognition. <laughs> <laughs> but not that this is a ship full of competitive people. Or <laughs> but then the second year we had a more po much more powerful uh, electromagnet that we turned on and kind of, if, if I remember right, we just kind of waved it over the top. Anything come up besides meteorites with the magnet? Um, you'd have to ask Mark about that. No, I mean like nails or oh, a no. ring. Oh, no. Last key. Last no, not, <laughs> nothing, uh, nothing like that, no. And but certainly no large pieces. Um, just you know kind of really tiny stuff like microscopic. Do you right. have any idea how big that meteorite was since it was observed by viewers? Um, I, I don't know okay. if if they know that. Um, big enough to show up on Doppler, yeah. But I don't. They don't know. Kind of what happened on the way down if it fragmented. Um, and then what happened once it hit the water, if it broke. And then uh, there wasn't a lot of good uh, current modeling, so we know where it hit the surface. Um, but depending on the size of it, if it was tiny pieces, it could be could have been swept away in the current. And then there's a very high sedimenta sedimentation rate in that area. It's The water is super turbid. You can barely see anything. Um, uh, so it was kind of like, if anything did fall, would it be embedded? And yeah, didn't didn't find anything large. But Mark Fries is a cool guy, and I had remembered from the Channel Islands this very spherical-looking. Um, out of place rock that looked like to me could be a meteorite. And I somehow remembered the dive from years ago and found a photo of it. And, and what did he say? And he thought it was more along the lines of something like a manganese nodule, but it was kind of standalone in, in a bunch of carbonate and like by itself. So I don't know. If you hang around geology departments for a long time mm -hmm. you see a lot of potential meteorites show up yeah. people with a box being like hey right well that's me <laughs> <laughs> it was just something that was totally like out of place and yeah i wonder if i could 
thought I have that in an email somewhere. That's really cool. I'm going to look it up now. Adam can give me a second opinion. <laughs> <laughs> now that I have your undivided attention, you're stuck on a ship with me. <laughs> Check out this meteorite. <laughs> Or that's a cool space earth ocean connection. There's a uh, actually, you know, more and more collaboration between oceanographers and astrobiologists because of the potential for life on the uh, moons of Jupiter and Saturn that have super crazy man they've got a liquid they've got liquid oceans that are salty just like ours covered with ice of course but uh, there's there's certainly the potential for you know complex life to form in, in those environments and some people think life originated on this planet perhaps at hydrothermal vents in the deep ocean don't you say don't they say like the water acts as almost like lava on the surface of those moons in a sense like because it's like i would say the water is kind of like the the ice is like tectonic plates oh, like you okay. can see uh you know where they're converging and where they're sliding past each other it's pretty awesome and then when you get a little crack in them these huge geysers uh shoot out because uh, i guess the weight of the ice on the water Interesting. It's looking pretty pretty okay if we if we um, are going zero three zero we might be able to change Argus's heading and kind of strafe along okay. but up to you Jess and uh, I was just kind of zigzagging yeah I don't know I just yeah we can we can we're gonna go along this contour for a while right uh, yeah 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 so I can just do some laterals there if you want instead yeah All right, how about this? Jake will go 90 degrees to the current heading. Yeah. Try that out. Yeah. Dealing in 45s and 95s is always easier. Yeah. <laughs> <for> <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just have you lateral there, Jake. Yep. If you want to come back towards me a little. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> You had a question about the weight plates, whether they get recovered. They do not because they are steel and they will corrode away and the rope is hemp and will break down. Okay, that's 90 degrees to our travel now. Yep. That yeah, looks good. So we'll just keep an eye on that in case there's any walls that come up there, but I wouldn't expect that to. Okay. We're moving point two. Yeah. Zero point two. Roger. Zero three zero. Yeah. You can use the ship's uh, path as a reference of like. Can I see what this is right there? Oops, that's a weird thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Want to push in there, Dave? Let's see what we got. Someone to guess coral? Nope. Uh, old old sponge. sponge, yeah. Oh, Maybe. Jinx. Specules. They look like specules. Could be, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Best guess. Could be a meteorite. <laughs> yeah, definitely sponge. All right. You can come back, what? We have a viewer asking if you've ever tried to sample something live and it just goes floating away. <laughs> oh yeah, all the time. Not all the time, sometimes. <laughs> Once in a while. I was watching from home on the last expedition when you had that snip of, I think it was black coral with a little lobster on it, the pink guy. Mm. Oh, the lobster will definitely get away, yeah. <laughs> well, the whole thing just kept floating away. It just, But you got it, it was good. So, Alothurian? <laughs> uh, is that what you're looking at? Yeah, in the butt, butt cam. Oh, in butt cam. Yeah, right. look at that. Is that light? What is that? Oh, yeah, it's that just third layer. <laughs> it's kind of nice. It's like playing like a movie, just going across, pan across. <laughs> Got a question about the manganese nodules. The nodules that were collected yesterday, some of them were cut open. Someone said they were formed around a piece of basalt. Could the basalt be pieces of chondrite? And how could you tell the difference? Could the basalt be pieces of, say that again? Chondrite. Chondrite? chondrite. Whoa! Type of uh, that would be extremely unlikely, but not totally out of the realm of possibility. So chondrite, for those who don't know, is a class of meteorites with a composition that is thought to be very close to the kind of average composition of the solar system. Oh. Um, so basalts would be different than that because basalts are forming as, uh, by partial melting of, of the Earth's mantle. So they kind of strip out certain components and enrich them and leave others behind. Chondrite is what is thought to be the average composition of the Earth, but uh, this was a pretty big piece and it looked uh, a lot like basalt had vesicles in it. Uh, it doesn't mean that it couldn't be a chondrite, but again, very unlikely. But if there were a chunk of chondrite down here and it was sitting here for a long time, it absolutely would get encrusted with the uh, manganese mm. it seemed like there was two layers of crust two episodes yeah crossed. yeah it kind of suggests that those nodules are not firmly in place right so that they're the little piece of basalt assumed basalt uh, had a very thin crust on it maybe like a millimeter or so and then seemed to have accumulated some sediment around it and then there was a maybe seven millimeter or so thickness of of manganese around the outside. It's cool. Maybe we should take a picture and put it on the website, yeah? Any possibility that that smaller ring could be the glass, outer glass? Uh, I don't think so, just in this case, because it was a very angular chunk. So that would not be like a naturally formed piece that would be quenched on all sides. Okay. Um, I wish, man. Yeah, that would be cool. The glass is like super useful for for the chemistry because it's it trapped what the 
magma was rather than the interior of the rock where it crystals form and, and basically you took that homogeneous composition and divided it up into little bits as yeah. it's harder to work with. Why do you prefer gassy rocks? It's my, uh, just my interest. So volcanoes, uh, you know, exchange material from the Earth's interior to its exterior and the gases are what we call like incompatible elements so they're as soon as an, any little bit of melt forms uh, co2 and water and other gases like fluorine and chlorine they all want to get in that melt and so they get it's one way to kind of really effectively move carbon from inside the earth to outside the earth uh, and I they also make really useful tools to see what was happening physically because for example in in lavas that are uh, not very viscous, so pretty runny. Bubbles that, that get deformed as it flows will very quickly re-round in the spheres, whereas in more viscous lava, they stay deformed. It's more difficult to, for them to pull back in the spheres. Um, so you can tell something about the viscosity. You can tell about how much it was deforming. It tells you about how quickly it came up from depth. So I think they're a pretty useful tool in that regard. Yep. Slightly up. Yeah. Yeah. This is an interesting question from a viewer. Do you have machine learning models to identify animals in your videos, and could they be used for live video? Oh. I think you would need cool. a lot more understanding of the organisms. I think we're still trying to learn to identify many of these organisms because this area has not been explored. That's yeah. a huge but area, avenue of, of uh, research right now, actually. Yeah. Is yeah. What they'd be really good at is is identifying things that are different than everything else in the, in the image. So uh, there are definitely folks who are, are building those algorithms right now. Uh, as Lisa suggested, one of the things that really helps is a lot of training data sets for the machine learning algorithm. So mm. this video uh, is undoubtedly going to contribute to that. I'm certainly going to use it for a project I'm working on that tries to identify the highlight clips of a video or the, the best video out of uh, using machine learning. And so we'll use this, have a bunch of different people pick out the highlights, which is, you know, obviously subjective, but then see what are the characteristics of what the vehicle's doing and what the imagery looks like that leads to those choices and have a machine do it for us. So supervised classification. Mm -hmm. Yep. What are you trying to classify? Like the rocks? Uh, no. So the, the video that we collect, what ultimately gets used the most are the highlight videos that are like some beautiful organism that we've oh, pulled in okay. on and is in really too. good focus and is not moving around a lot. And that's a tiny fraction of the total video. So rather yeah. than having someone scrub through and pick out those pieces, we can potentially do it a lot with okay. a lot less manpower or human power. Sorry. Yeah, Steve was talking about, uh, um, you know, uh, being a bit skeptical and, and rightfully so about precise coral identification but if you were to run a 24-hour video through an AI that picked out individual that picked out corals and then that you then identified them hmm. that would be a lot easier than you watching it perhaps yeah, that makes sense. those freeze frames and or you know you'd, you'd get a quick quicker snapshot of just the things you wanted you were interested in seeing in a dive and then yeah. further classifying from there and I know that there's been work uh, 
for identifying midwater creatures um, mm -hmm. the same way. The flow cytobots, those? Imaging yeah. flow cytobots? No, I, I think, so there's a, there's this awesome built-in training set from Embari that they have a specialist on every dive logging species. And uh, I know that is at least one effort that that uh, some folks at Hui and Mbari and uh, MIT Media Lab were doing to create uh, machine learning to pick out NID organisms. But the flow cytobot thing is also, yeah, a definitely a, there you're getting microscopic images of the same stuff. Yeah, an automated classification of them. Yeah, and they already have algorithms to pick out the, you know, like region of interest where in, in a little organism is so you end up with a much smaller more manageable data set to try and interpret mm, yeah that's true it's amazing how far they've come just for i mean anybody can download apps that allow you to to id plants and animals and do citizen science and contribute to public databases I really enjoy an app called Seek by iNaturalist. I oh, use yeah, yeah. For plants and animals. I'm out riding my bike. Lots of stops on the way. <laughs> There's a cool one I've used, and it's called Whale Alert. Um, and it's a combination of a bunch of different resources, but one of them is uh, um, passive acoustic monitoring of whales, and they actually use machine learning to categorize right whale calls in Mass Bay. Mm. I think mm. that's a project with Hui. Um, but then they also have like crowdsourcing of ships can log whether they see whales or um, uh, just like uh, observers. Um, and you can like submit your uh, sighting and it'll be logged and, uh, on the app. And it, there's like a, you know, a, large, a large map and it shows you where all the whales have been sighted and throughout the seasons, and it's cool. That's awesome. One of our viewers asked, uh, when we were mapping due to the weather delay, found a donut, and what was that? Anybody familiar with that? Oh, yeah. So that was a, a little seamount just southeast of uh, seamount G, so the last one in the chain. And it did look like a donut. It was kind of perfectly round, and it had a depression in the middle of it that... You know, we didn't, we weren't able to visit that, but I'm fairly certain it's a volcanic feature. So uh, a little volcanic eruption that uh, at the end of it, as the magma withdraws, you know, or, or is expelled and kind of withdraws back into the vent, the top of it collapsed down uh, above the conduit in that circular feature. So it's like a little tiny volcano with a tiny pit crater on the top of it. You can see nice round craters like that on land. Uh, and If you go to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, there's a place called Chain of Craters Road, and you drive along it, you can look into these almost perfectly round, uh, deep pit craters, which is different than a caldera. So you, can, you have to drive around the caldera to get there. That's a much larger, kind of less distinct uh, depression at the at the top of the volcano. We've mapped some seamounts that kind of seem like a conglomeration, a bunch of those circular donut shapes kind of stacked together. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I think that was Rivia Hegedo. A viewer is asking if the manganese nodules can be the used Chana to Cops. determine... Yeah. Past oh. ocean chemistry, like they use ice. Can you uh, can you put your yeah. mic up a little more? Oh, but it was already there. 
to determine what? Uh, whether you could use manganese nodules to determine past ocean chemistry. Oh, yeah. For sure. So people uh, use them. I mean, manganese nodules don't, they have a particular chemistry, but uh, I've seen them used for mm -hmm. lead isotopes. But uh, yeah, they're they're a great archive because they grow consistently and slowly. This is our friend, the Chana Cops. Oh. He's seeing us off from our last dive here. <laughs> what a cutie. So steady. He has uh, some white spots on his back, huh? Yeah. This guy. Oh, oh. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Gonna miss those little guys. Yeah, these are cuties. There's a oh, his little barbell. <laughs> oh, he yeah. doesn't like this. The uh, oh, look at angle, that. Angle angler thing is popping yeah, out. Yeah, a little lure. I wonder if it's like so cool. related to like exertion. Like <laughs> if he, oh, oh nice. nope, my angler popped out. <laughs> nice chase. There's awesome. Oh, gotta hit the sea floor, I think. Is your landing gear coming out? Yep. It's coming out. Ooh. <laughs> oh, awesome so shot. Cute. Oh, landing gear. He's like Leave landing. <laughs> There's the landing. He's luffing a little bit here. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> awesome shot. Oh, it's super oh, stuck in the side. See his oh. knees. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's so grumpy now. <laughs> pow, pow. <laughs> Looks like maybe an encrusting tunicate there to the right. Just out of We're not done with the Chanakos. There it is. Right there. <laughs> it's just leading us to Calm that. down, please. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like a balloon. Oh. He's inflated. I like how he's trying to steady himself. Yeah. The knees, man. All right. It's like, I know. Yeah. I love it. The more you <laughs> <Dave. kind> of clubs. <clears throat> Thanks. All right. Awesome Tuna kit, shot. You say? Oh. I don't know. It was something on the rock that looked like possibly an encrusting tunicate or... Don't know. I don't know if encrusting is the right word. I think it is. <laughs> 